without, uh, let's get to the topic of today. I'd like to introduce Marie. She'll give us more details about her and Marie will be uh, talking to us about connection in midwifery, a student midwife's perspective. So welcome Marie. Marie is from Scotland. Uh, so welcome Marie. Let me just hand over the presentation back to you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Stella. That's that was absolutely wonderful. I'm going to um, just close my public chat. So um, if anybody has any questions, um, you can put it in the chat and Stella will keep an eye on them for me as we go along. OK, so welcome to um, my talk this evening. Um, we're here to talk about connection midwifery and, and I'm a student midwife. So here I am, and um, I thought I would give you a wee bit of background about myself, um, where we are today, and um, and the current course. So <clears throat> my first degree was um, postgrad was in environmental science and heritage conservation, which will um, I, I'm using partially for this talk as well. Um, and I came to Scotland for my postgrad um, at St Andrews. Um, I went on to manage um, multidisciplinary teams um, on um, large um, historic estates here in Scotland. Um, and then 13 years ago, I had my first child. And um, after connecting with Sheila Kitzinger, who was a wonderful, wonderful person within midwifery, gave so much to us, um, I became a fertility teacher, a perinatal therapist, um, and birth companion and um, the families I supported covered um, for NHS boards and I did that independently. The new course that I'm mentioning here, um, so um, we've got new standards of proficiency um, within the new course. The, we are regulated by the Nursing and Midwifery Council um, and um, <coughs> this new course um, has started at um, RGU this year, um, of which I'm a second year um, now, currently. Um, we, um, this new course en encompasses caseloading, um, continuity of co um, care or caseloading, um, more preparation for um, prescribing, um, eventually um, finishing with a post postgrad that we would do separately and the newborn infant examination, um, which traditionally was a postgrad um, and was used to be done by um, solely by paediatricians um, and is now encompassed within the course. Um, so I've got a couple of references here and I will have references at the end which will, um, will flash up quicker than you will be able to read. And I know this. Um, however, also know that this is recorded and if you want to check out the references you'll be able to go back onto the website and then pause and you'll be able to see what I've referred to. Um, so why the mushroom? Well let's get comfortable and I'll explain but before I do I'm going to recognize that your midwives, stu student midwives and researchers here today in the main. I'm absolutely thrilled that you've all come to connect this evening um, from far and wide by the looks of things in Canada and New Zealand and Germany, UK and Turks and Caicos. I'm so thrilled to be here with you tonight or in the morning or in the afternoon, depends on where you are, I guess. So what ground will we cover tonight? Um, I'm going to talk about autonomy, intersubjectivity, some organisational psychology, ergonomics, polyvagal theory, mycological theory as well, for good measure. And I want to note that I take confidentiality very, very seriously. And so what I do share tonight in the caseloads is anonymised. The, my families that I care for are always my priority. We're all born. Most of us will have been born with the support of a midwife and that unites us all as humans. So 
So what on earth is this? I can imagine you're thinking. So this is um, a slide to introduce the analogy of uh, midwifery um, being likened to um, mycological um, macrocosm and microcosm. And here we have got, um, I'll introduce you to Eurospora crassa, um, who is um, here under fluorescence microscopy. Um, and really, it's um, this was a piece of work which I won't go into in any depth, but I thought it was really interesting and inspiring um, because it actually um, showed um, how the connections worked between wild and mutant variety. Um, and I thought that was interesting um, because we're talking about connections. So let's see what I see as the midwifery microcosm. So that's here. So you can see, if you remember, I, I mentioned the, the little mushroom at the beginning there. Um, here's the student midwife um, and she or he is a mushroom here on the forest floor. And underneath them is a 3D network and you can see represented, not every not everybody's here, but you can see as we go around, we've got third sector support, ancillary support, um, the medical support, um, specialist clinics and teams, additional professions, our governance and regulators, um, professional associations and unions, and we've got our academic midwifery support underneath us, and clinical midwifery support as well. And we've also got um, child protection um, support um, professionals too that we incorporate. Um, what I wanted to get across with this slide was the the student midwife is what you see on the on the surface, but underneath there is a vast three D network that's ever changing. It's in dynamic equilibrium, which is why it would never be possible to actually put everybody's title um, that, and um, organisation on this slide because it's always changing. Um, it's symbiotic as well. In fact, when I mentioned to my son, um, who's now 13, um, I, that I was doing this talk and I ran it through with him, I asked him, is, is there anything that you'd like me to, um, to say? And what he said was, um, remember, that um, all of the, um, when it comes to the, the mushrooms, that they use the network to rejuvenate each other. And he's right. We do, don't we, as professionals. Um, micro, um, the, the mushrooms actually, the fungal network underneath actually um, pushes um, across the forest um, information and nutrients and shares in a symbiotic way. And so that's how um, we support each other in symbiosis. And, and how do we connect? Well, we connect using um, lots of different, um, again, not everything will be here, um, but we've got conferences, um, invited guests either into NHS boards, um, or within universities. Um, we've got clinical record systems, so the confiden confidential structures such as Badgenet, um, and um, we've also got um, journals and research. We all know some wonderful journals and research papers that we can um, think of that connect our ideas together. We have got professional panels, and boards, and you can you can get involved in workshops um, and re review boards, um, to help um, work out guidance. Um, and um, we've also got group training, and that that can be so helpful to bring all the teams together. Um, Schwartz rounds; those are um, when we have um, lots of different professionals come together to to share. Um, various different stories and can be quite inspiring. Um, we've got OSID and LinkedIn, which are ways of um, us sharing our knowledge with each other of, of what we've achieved and how we're linked. Um, obviously, we've got handovers, 
um, within the, the clinical practice, social media. And um, at my university, RGU, we had, um, and we, we continue to have an international students project um, where the students came together with other universities. Um, the other I did it, um, it was with Switzerland, and um, we produced a um, conference together, which was wonderful, and I still maintain friendships from that today. Um, we also have um, Turas, um, which is um, an online learning system which is used by NHS Scotland um, and all the universities link into that. Um, and iLearn, which um, is a wonderful um, learning system that's online um, run by our union, RCM. And here at the end, we've got um, something called SBAR and closing the communication loop, because I think that's quite important. Um, SBAR um, is, is a way of um, the professionals um, putting information across about um, the people that we are taking care of in a succinct manner. And it stands for Situation Background Assessment and Recommendations. Um, and that enables us to um, be better communicators. And closing the communication loop um, means that if somebody asks somebody to do something, they close it back around again and um, say, yes, I understand. And then I have done it. Great, you've done it. It's basically the simplified version. But that, it, that, um, that by using those um, techniques, we actually avoid making um, mistakes um, within the clinical practice. So I thought I would share a couple of um, anonymized um, scenarios that, that happened um, that, that talk about this. So um, I was involved um, when a, um, what we call a maternal collapse case, um, a woman um, collapsed um, in her bed um, postnatally. Um, I went over, I pulled the cord, um, the emergency cord, which pulled, which informs the team to come running, um, flattened the bed and started to do A, B, C, D, E, which is airway, breathing, circulation. It's a, an, another way of as, um, a, a protocol that we would follow medically. Um, and then the team arrived, um, which I was, I was greatly relieved about. Um, Afterwards, the important thing I want to get across with that, that case study was that afterwards um, I spoke to the senior obstetrician and asked some questions. Um, and because I did that, I gained some knowledge and skills that otherwise I wouldn't have had. And I, I've, I'm so grateful to have, for having these relationships. Also, the senior charge midwife took the time um, and got me a cup of coffee. Um, which is a wonderful moment of connection too. Um, and um, yeah, I, I was, um, I, I learned a lot from that, that scenario. PPH stands for postpartum hemorrhage. Um, a woman had had her baby um, and, um, and she was bleeding heavily. So I worked with a supervisor and had prompt um, team um, come and respond to the, the call that we made with the emergency bell. Um, and everybody fell into place. Um, we stabilized her and um, we transferred via ambulance to a bigger hospital. Um, I went on to um, stay with the woman for a lot longer um, to help um, her feel safe, having somebody that she knew um, and that was worthwhile for her. Many departments were involved in that case um, in keeping her safe, um, and it was like a, it was like being involved in a well-oiled machine. Um, everybody fell into place. Everybody knew their part, and actually, I was really proud to be part of that. So this slide um, is talking about protective connection. So 
human factors in ergonomics, for those of you who might, might not have come across that before, basically um, I would summarise it as having the right person in the right place at the right time with the right resources. Um, that, that can make such a big difference um, to how we connect and how well and streamlined our services um, work. Recently, um, we've had, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this very important report, the Ockenden report, which looked into failings within maternity services. Um, and um, it, it was found that um, working relationships and resources um, really needed improving in maternity services. Um, and um, I think that by improving ergonomics and human factors, we, we can actually work towards doing that. Um, having good boundaries and understanding um, that um, the, the woman has a choice and her choices are paramount. Her informed choices, it's, it's up to us as professionals to inform her um, and then she and support her choice and that is protected via legislation and guidelines and um, so I've referenced quite a few here underneath. So now we're going to talk about um, the microcosm, a little bit about um, intersubjectivity. So what I'm calling the microcosm is you can see here um, with this wee diagram that I've done, a sort of complicated Venn diagram. Um, and here's the midwife, and then we've got the mother and the baby with them, and then the, the, wide, the wider family, so um, the partner and children. So um, what I mean by intersubjectivity is um, the, um, the conscious and unconscious um, sharing of ideas between two subjects. Um, so the subjects being, being here, these various circles, and um, that's based on Herschel's um, theory, um, which I've linked there below. Um, and it's this, obviously we would like this area, this kind of, um, this is the intersubjectivity area here, and it changes. Um, so um, this would be um, moving further out if we didn't have a great connection um, uh, as, a, as a student midwife or midwife with the family. Or perhaps um, we, we did things that actually brought this, these two closer together. Um, sometimes there are moments when the baby is, is out here um, as well. For example, um, in, in cases when um, the mother's unwell and you need to look after the baby separately um, and um, she's not there to do skin to skin so you're interacting directly with the baby um, alone um, and um, yeah so that, that's that's what I'm showing by um, by putting this here um, what I would like to say about it is that um, really what we're trying to do um, within midwifery is we're trying to bring that those closer together overlapping so that we are and I'm going to use a bit of polyvagal theory here and um, again that's referenced below there um, where we are aiming to have glimmers and by glimmers um, what I mean um, is um, times of connection, calm, clarity curiosity, rest, recovery. These are the things we want to promote. Um, and as opposed to triggers, which is shock and crisis, disorientation and dis dissociation, um, fright, flight and freeze. So anything that we can do to bring these closer together in this microcosm um, as student midwives and midwives um, is great. Um, we humanise birth in that way, working um, collaboratively um, rather than having a, an implied um, embodied authority um, over the woman. We're, we're working together um, as a team. Um, and of course, like I say, they move. 
Um, the other one that I would like to quite, I'd like to mention here as well um, is um, Mo Tapib's work, um, which is um, wonderful work that shows um, that um, relaxation sessions um, can help bring um, the intersubjectivity together, from my point of view, um, closer together, um, because the the woman and the midwife and the baby are much calmer um, and there is a, a joint understanding. Um, so I think that's important work that I'm looking forward to hearing more about and there's further work published with them. So with that in mind, um, I wanted to do a wee caseload comparison. Um, the um, here we've got three types of um, women, um, each with different needs. Um, we have um, the lady at the top, um, she had quite complex social needs, a very unusual style, um, which could be very easily um, be misunderstood um, for aggression. She really needed dim lights, no unnecessary noise, and no touching. Um, and because I was her continuity of carer, um, student midwife, I was able to facilitate that and make sure that everybody who was supervising me um, was able to know before they went in the room. And she had a wonderful um, outcome. Um, and then there's the, the second case load um, lady. And um, she had a really complex medical history. She was very, very well informed um, and she really needed to feel fully heard um, about her choices. Um, she, she took great comfort in, in doing research um, so I could support her in that. And she really appreciated humour. Not everybody appreci appreciates um, humour um, in the clinical setting, um, but she really did. Um, and because of that, again, I approached um, uh, her care totally differently. Um, and then um, there was the third case um, who um, this lady had post-traumatic stress disorder um, and she really needed me to help slow things down with my voice. She needed a warm, nurturing voice. She needed to be touched. She needed regular eye contact. And then afterwards, she said, you believed I could, so I believed I could. And that's really what we're aiming for, isn't it? That shared connection. So I thought I would share those with you. And of course, there's the baby. So um, we're also connecting with the baby in all of this. When we're doing um, abdominal palpation, we're using our hands. We're finding the position of. You've the, got mother, the Marie. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, those are those are just unconnected. Ah, okay, thank you. Um, we're connecting um with the baby, and when we're doing abdominal palpation, with our hands, we're feeling for position, and we're also feeling for any fetal movement. Um, when we are using the fetoscope, the Doppler or the CTG, we're connecting with the baby and the baby's health, um, listening to their heartbeat. Um, we're also um, connecting with the baby um, when we do the newborn infant exam. So um, I often change what order um, I would do things in according to how the, the baby is um, cooperating or not. Um, and um, and you you are connecting with that baby, and um, doing that. Um, and then here I wanted you might wonder why on earth has she got um, the um, some musical score here? Um, it's because um, when I was um, learning um, newborn recess, um, I realised that when I was doing inflation breaths, I needed to slow down. So I don't know whether or not you know the Blue Danube 
um, at all. It's a very slow waltz. It's a well-known waltz. You might know it from um, Space Odyssey um, or Squid Games. Um, it's that one um, that goes do 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 do. It's like that. So you can imagine when you're doing the. I can't see where my camera is. When you're doing inflation breaths, it's one two three two two three and so i use that in my mind and um, so now every time um i'm doing that thereafter i think of this lovely waltz and um, so that when i was actually in um a newborn resuscitation um situation i was actually kept calm um because i, I was thinking about this waltz and that was enabling me to to remember and by using the um the resuscitation um, protocol we're communicating with the baby we're communicating with the baby to tell them to breathe we want them to breathe so we're on the, the last the last slide here so here are my wonderful wonderful peers um at rgu in scotland this was actually, um, I got their permission to, to share this photo. I am immensely proud of all of them. Um, the, this was actually the first time that we came together because of the blended um, learning um, that was partially online um, and partially with only the skills being face to face. And those skills um, sessions were done in small clusters um, in order to um, protect um, everyone against COVID-19. Um, this was this year um, that this photo was taken and it was actually the first time that our entire cohort were together. So um, you, would, you might think in those circumstances, how on earth are you connecting as a cohort? Because obviously in the past, cohorts would come together as students and you would see each other day to day during theory slots and presumably you're not doing that. We've actually connected quite well. Um, we have formed some wonderful relationships. Um, we've also, um, we've, because of the blended learning and being online, it's it's been really invaluable um, because it's enabled those of us who live in rural areas to continue. Um, for, if we're far, far away from uni, maybe if, um, we've got caring responsibilities at home. It's actually been absolutely wonderful to, to have that. Um, and I hope it continues um, for people because it, it really it, it makes um, midwifery more accessible um, to people in the whole of Scotland. Um, the Midwifery Society, of which I'm the president of, um, they, that brings people together too. Um, the student midwives come together. We, um, we've organised um, talks such as sign language and aromatherapy. Um, we've had um, nights out um, at the ball. Um, we had a spring ball recently, uh, which I'll say a bit more about in a bit. And um, we've had um, invited speakers. Um, and um, we've done some reasonable amount of fundraising as well and um, through exercise <laughs> so um, we, um, we fundraised um, over two thousand um, pounds for um, for charities that supports um, families in the UK and abroad um, and you might be wondering what on earth is Blether and Bosie's Marie well it's Doric, um, which is um, a local dialect um, where the university is based. Um, and um, it basically means a, a chat or a talk and a cuddle. And those are online sessions. Um, those are online sessions that are done regularly. Um, so people can drop in no matter where they are on placement. And bear in mind that our placements are covering a, a location if you think about the map of Scotland and you get draw a line across these the top of the central belt and Coombe Fife and a wee bit to the west and then our placements cover all the way to the top of Orkney north of that 
Um, so it's a vast, vast area. Um, and we've got um, young and old students going out to various different places um, out on placement as well as those in theory and everybody can pop in um, to the Blether and Bosey so it's a bit like a coffee meeting really and it has a set format so everybody comes in you would introduce yourself with your name what area you're in and um, something good that's happened recently so we hear some real wonderful victories um, and something that's a bee in your bonnet. Now that could be maybe something didn't go too well um, or um, something's not going your way or it could even, we've had a few that, you know, a, a, an article has come out and we're feeling kind of cross about that. And we took it all out and we support each other. Um, we've supported each other through um, health and financial emergencies and grief. Um, we've had some amazing highs. Um, I'm immensely proud of my peers. I really am. Um, now, I also wanted to um, talk about the ball, which happened after the deadline for the, the slides. Um, otherwise, I would have shared some wonderful pictures of our spring ball. Um, we actually had it was it was a beautiful evening and um, we all came together in our lovely our lovely dresses and and everything um, in a beautiful historic um house hotel and we had a dinner and a dance um and when i totted it up we had just in that room alone over one year we had contributed one over 1.2 million pounds worth of placement hours um to the nhs which I think is pretty incredible. Um, and um, each of the tables was named after um, a, an inspiring midwife who, who has passed on, such as um, Mary Cronk. So we all learned a little bit too. Um, and I thought I would share with you um, the little gift that we all got, because this is about connection too. So we had everybody had one of these little presentation boxes and I don't know whether or not you can see but I had these made Ooh, there we go can you see it's a little badge Ooh, there we go I think it's the opposite it's a little badge and it's got a little silver baby in the middle there little enamel badge with our icon and as I leave you this evening and you've all been very patient with me um, I thought I would go um, in sharing what um, part of the um, the toast that I gave at the ball. So this badge signifies a bond between us, the founding of a permanent kinship in this ever-changing world of midwifery. This promise, starting in the hearts of the midwives back in the mists of time, and perpetuating forwards for as long as a human exists. If you give me your word, then I will give you mine to create peace in the births of our nation's babies and uphold midwifery forevermore. Now we can't raise a glass, so let's raise our thoughts for all the safe hands and warm hearts which will care for all of our world's babies because we are all needed, yourselves included. So thank you for being so nice and listening to me. And these are the references, I'll hold it there. Um, whilst I hold these references, I'm completely happy to take any questions. I'm going to open the chat now. Thank you, Marie. That was very inspiring. Uh, we have lots of comments on the chat box. Uh, let me just go up. Uh, sorry. A beautiful analogy of the mushroom. I really enjoyed that. Um, there's a lot of uh, comments uh, around um, teamwork uh, from Lauren. She, she really enjoyed the really the interesting link. Sorry, there's an echo. So she really enjoyed the interesting link uh, 
where she said that we really need, do need the support of our colleagues and wider teams. Without them, she cannot imagine. Uh, Celine had a very interesting quote from Simon Sinek. A team is not a group of people who work together. A team is a group of people who trust each other. Uh, so very uh, interesting comments coming in. Um, let me just see. Uh, remember, we are open for uh, questions to Marie. Uh, uh, well done, Marie. Uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, as you think of questions, maybe, Marie, I have a question. Uh, have you had a favorable placement uh, as a student? I have indeed. Um, I really enjoyed um, working in community um, at a standalone midwifery unit. Um, the reason being that um, there was such a wonderful mix of um, antenatal, interpartum and postnatal. Um, and I, I really loved the staff there. They were very, very welcoming. Um, so much so that I actually left my mug there in the hope that I'd end up going back. Beautiful. Um, there's a question from Sarah. Uh, what feedback have you had from families about the connections you, you have made with them providing continuity of care? That's a great question, Sarah. Um, my most recent um, experience, um, the, the mother um, reached out. Um, she was in a very vulnerable position and, and I did not leave her side. And um, she, she said to me, you're like my sister. Um, and that meant a great deal to me. That really did. Um, because we're all human. Um, so, and um, continuity of carer really humanizes birth. Um, and I really believe it makes um, being a student midwife um, much more profound in experience. You learn more too. Um, so um, that was a nice, a nice feedback. Um, and um, trying to think back to any others. Um, the the lady who had um, the the first case study um, I gave with the the connection. Um, uh, she she gave me some wonderful feedback. She said, "You just let me get on with it. It's what I needed." Um, and so, yeah, and that's, that's, that's wonderful when, when a woman, um, believes that she's in charge and you are just facilitating in the background, um, and they're the priority. I think you're doing a good job when you get that. Thank you, Marie. There was a question from Lauren. Uh, connection, trust, support, continuity of care for families. Uh, she, 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 I guess that was the question. Is there, con uh, how do you build on connection, trust and support for uh, the families? And maybe Lorraine, and le if I've gotten it wrong, you can just uh, probably clarify it. I think with continuity of care, you're, um, you are able to build a more profound connection with people um, because you're, you're able to spend more time with them. Um, you are able to go away and research what's pertinent to their case and then come back. Um, and um, and that, can, that can be um, wonderful for people um, that they, they don't have to keep um, explaining their complex needs um or even if they don't have complex needs they they just they can just relax um when we meet somebody new um no matter how lovely they are we're we're you know our, our barriers are up until we get used to one another we have that intersubjectivity we build that up together that takes time now most midwives are really good at building that very quickly 
but with continuity of carer, um, it, it, it's, um, you, you do build a very um, deep um, attachment, which is clinically, I think, is, um, is more effective as well. Um, Thank you for that. Uh, there was a comment from Katie. Uh, love this, Marie, uh, about the, you know, the the music, and she said she often thinks of midwives doing a dance when they when they provide care, moving across the room with grace, and makes me think of the swing your belly session today, and all the biomechanic causes that. Um, will be funded that was uh, that were announced today. So a uh, very good connection there. Um, let me see. Oh, there's a question from Celine and Celine also wanted to know, can you share the, the toast you did on text? Uh, if you don't mind, there's a question on how to, how to, how to nourish connectivity in the context of fragmented care. I think by having a team that works really well together, you're creating a an environment where um, where people you're able to focus on the families themselves, as opposed to building into subjectivity between the teams. So that's a good start, um, and um, staying up to date and being able to um, to move from one type of case to another. Um, I think that that helps. Thank you. 